I just got to say, episode 23, Revolution, has to probably be one of the most gut-wrenching, heart-stabbing episodes of not only season 5, but probably the entire show. Words honestly cannot describe how I felt after watching this episode. But before I get into what happened in this episode, I just wanted to let you guys know that I posted my reaction to this episode on my other channel, so feel free to go check it out. It will be linked in the description. The whole premise of this episode is of Chloe being the new mayor of Paris and Ladybug and Cat Noir not being able to do anything about it because it's not their job. Their mission is to help save Paris by de akumatizing villains, and as Chloe isn't akumatized, they can't do anything. They just have to sit back and let it happen. But the problem is, Chloe is in fact akumatized, but Monarch made it so it seems like she wasn't, so this whole time Ladybug and Cat Noir could have been doing something about it, but they didn't because they didn't know. Meanwhile, Adrian really wants to tell Marinette about what's going on, about the fact that he's going to London, but he can never seem to find the time. Eventually, Chloe ends up putting Adrian and Marinette and a bunch of other people in Paris into this detention thingy, where they kind of just have to walk around in circles and hear Chloe say, ridiculous, utterly ridiculous, over and over and over again. Being confused about how this is happening and knowing that something isn't right, both Marinette and Adrian, without ever communicating to each other, I might add, create a diversion so that way they'd be able to transform into Ladybug and Cat Noir and help out with the situation. But surprise, as soon as they get out, they end up getting themselves into quite a pickle. Chloe traps them using the Miraculous of Protection or the Turtle Miraculous and makes it so they can't escape or use their powers. Due to this, first of all, they can't fight because they're stuck, but second of all, they are now starting to detransform. Luckily, they realized that they were able to slow down the process of detransforming, and that is when the resistance comes in to fight the villains, which is one of my favorite things ever. I absolutely love the resistance. And this is where the most interesting thing and probably most anticipated thing happens. Ladybug and Cat Noir are able to make it so they won't detransform until they actually say the detransformation words, which basically means that they can use their power over and over and over again, and they will not have to suffer any consequences because of it. Their powers do not have any kind of time limit anymore, which is super exciting. Miss Boussier then yanks the sash off of Chloe and rips it in half, de her. And just, wow, stan Miss Boussier. Andre then comes in and drags her away, which like, it's about time, to be honest. Due to Andre and Chloe both not being mayor anymore, everyone decides that Miss Boussier would be an amazing mayor and they would help her with a campaign. And since the school dance was that night, they used it as a way to just celebrate everything that had happened. And everything was just going so well and amazing. Until it wasn't. All of that happiness, of course, doesn't last. This is where the episode starts to take a very dark and tragic turn. Marinette goes home to change and get ready for the party, and Adrian goes home to talk to his father, but as you can imagine, things do not end well. Adrian opens the door to one Gabriel Agreste standing right in front of him. He instantly and very aggressively tells Adrian to go pack his bags for London. Adrian tries to tell him that he doesn't want to go, and in return, Gabriel basically just yells at him, which terrifies the crap out out of Adrian. The look on his face absolutely shatters my heart. Adrian, of course, obeys because he doesn't have any other option. After packing his bags, he walks into the car, and while in the car, Adrian instantly breaks down and starts telling his father that he doesn't want to go. He knows what he wants, and it's to be happy with Marinette in Paris with all of his friends. And Gabriel, being the impassive person he is, doesn't care. He just says, that it's what his mom would have wanted. Adrian goes on to tell him that no, that's not at all what his mom would have wanted. She would have wanted him to be happy, which is obviously nothing but the truth. But once again, Gabriel doesn't listen. He doesn't even say anything. He just sits there, stone-faced, emotionless. And I just, how? 
Adrian tries to get out of the car, but he couldn't, so he just sits back and calls Marinette. He tells her that he's going to London and that he's sorry for hurting her. She also starts breaking down Lucky Charm in hand and says that she made a promise to Adrian that she would never abandon him and she was going to keep it. She runs out of her house and drives on her bike to the plane, calling out his name as she approaches it, which of course catches the attention of Adrian and the gorilla. So the gorilla unbuckles Adrian's seat and motions him to go up to her. And this, my friends, is where we get the scene that has been playing on repeat in my head for the past six months. Adrian runs out of the plane and Marinette runs up to the plane. They meet on the stairs and they kiss for the first time. Gabriel gets out of his car and says to pull them apart, to which the gorilla and the other guy that was there do. But not without a fight, they had to pull to get them apart. To be honest, it almost seemed as if they wouldn't get pulled apart, that their hold on each other was just way too strong, but unfortunately, they did. The gorilla guides Adrian back to his seat, and as this is going on, Adrian is just bawling his eyes out, and the gorilla is crying, and like, so am I, and I... I can't with this scene. To be honest, I didn't cry before they kissed. I also didn't cry while they were kissing, but something about seeing Adrian sitting there with tears coming out of his eyes sounding just so, so heartbroken broke me in a way that Miraculous has never broken me before. And trust me, Miraculous has broken me many different times. The last little bit of this episode is of Marinette just watching the plane fly off. She then goes to the party, and when she gets there, Chloe calls Marinette to tell her that Adrian was leaving for London and they wouldn't be able to be together anymore. To which Marinette was just like, girl, I know. Adrian loves me, there's nothing you can do about it, now go away, and hangs up. Like I said, this episode was so heartbreaking. It doesn't even feel real. Like, it just feels like you're watching some kind of dark, weird fan fiction that doesn't have anything to do with the actual show. This episode was just so different from any others, it's hard to believe that seasons 1 through 4 is a part of the same show that season 5 is. I said this in my reaction video to this episode. I've always advocated that like Miraculous is a kid show, but it has like darker themes that like kids wouldn't understand. So that way like anyone from any age can enjoy the show. But like after seeing episode 23 and 24, I'm not so sure about that anymore. And I still stand by that. This show is getting to a point where it's maybe even a little too dark for me to handle mentally. I don't know how the heck a kid is supposed to handle and understand any of that. Anyway, so as for the things that I wanted to dig a little bit deeper on when it comes to this episode, Adrian and Marinette are so cute. I don't know, just like all of the little things and like their little moments that they have together are so freaking cute. And don't even get me started on the way that Adrian was looking at Marinette this entire episode. I think that's honestly one of the reasons why Adrianette dating is my favorite. I've always been so in love with the way that Adrian looks at her and like now that they're dating, we see it so much more often and I love that. It makes me so excited to see future seasons and how their relationship will change and evolve. The second thing that I wanted to say is something that I actually did not mention at all in my overview of the episode and it is Lila or whatever her name is. Basically the reason that anything within Collision and Revolution was able to happen is all because of Lila. She was coaching Chloe the whole entire time. I feel like these episodes really just gave us a little taste of what it would be like for her to be the villain and I love that. I also have this really 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 big theory that Lila these past few episodes has been plotting to steal the miraculous from Gabriel and I think maybe in the finale she will steal it. And I feel like one of the reasons why I think this is just because of the fact that she has been collecting so much information on Gabriel and who he is and all of his secrets. I don't really see why she would have needed that information if she wasn't trying to do something. Now skipping ahead quite far into the episode, I wanted to talk about what Plague and Natalie said. So starting off, Natalie mentions to Adrian that he cannot 
disobey his father, which definitely gives us more senti proof. However, I'm not going to go into that. I just wanted to bring up the fact that she had said that. As for Plague, he mentioned something about Adrian being stronger now, and Adrian says that he doesn't believe that because he still can't stand against his father. This is literally the reason why I hate that he doesn't know that he's a senti. He really does deserve to know. He's constantly downplaying himself. He tells himself that he's just not courageous enough or strong enough to talk to his father, that he's not good enough. But in reality, he is courageous enough, he is strong enough, he is good enough to stand against his father, but he just physically cannot do it. Wanting to do something so strongly, but not being able to do it, and not knowing why you can't do it, is definitely so emotionally and physically draining. It's only right for him to comprehend and understand why he felt this way. He needs to know that it has absolutely nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with his father. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that Adrian had brought up the fact that Emily just wanted Adrian to be happy. And it just hurts knowing that Gabriel saw the videos that Emily had made for Natalie. He knew what she wanted. He's known that's all she's ever wanted. And he knows that Adrian is right, but he doesn't care. He went against all of her wishes for no other reason than him being selfish. You know, I kind of want him to bring Emily back so that way she can just divorce him and give Adrian the love and protection that he deserves. The love and protection that he was lacking from his father. But anyway, moving on, towards the end of the episode, Audrey said something that I thought was quite interesting. I think it's always been somewhat of a big theory in the fandom that Chloe might be a senti as well. And I personally was never really fully sure about this theory. I mean, Audrey and Andre are close friends with Gabriel, so if she was a senti, it wouldn't really be that surprising, but it was still a little confusing for me. However, Audrey said that they were going to take control of her life again. So honestly, the likelihood of Chloe being a senti went up by a lot. Now, there are still a few aspects about this that confuse me, but I'll probably save that for a video talking about this topic because I really think that this topic could be a whole video in itself. So anyway, moving along, I want to talk about the kiss scene. When I first saw this scene, I was really confused and I didn't like the fact that Adrian and Marinette never talked to each other. She calls out his name a few times, but that's it. They just kiss and leave without ever saying a word. And like I said, at first I didn't like that, but after I thought about it, I realized that it's probably one of my favorite things about the scene. I think the fact that they didn't say anything just adds so much more emotion and makes the scene so much more intimate. Marinette could have gone on this whole long rant about how much she loves Adrian and how she would never abandon him and how they'll make it, they'll find a way to be together, but she didn't because she didn't have to. That kiss alone told him everything he needed to know. There wasn't even a need to say anything. Their actions said the things that couldn't be expressed with words. There's just something so precious about that. And the very last thing that I wanted to talk about is the very last scene of the episode. Lila opening whatever this is. But basically when the resistance had come in, everything kind of went south, so Gabriel grabs Tomo's arm and they run. During this time, Tomo ends up dropping this thing that controlled the robot. Lila sees all of this and picks it up, which is what we see her trying to open at the end of the episode. I'm not entirely sure what this means, but whatever it is, it's not good, I can tell you that. She's planning something and it's definitely something that we are not prepared for. 